What hey guys, so I just wanted to do a uh, little video on uh, the gimbal on the copter um, for whoever is thinking about doing this mod to their uh, their Forsaken G3. Um, it's working out pretty well for me. Um, you know, it is quite an investment uh, at the board itself with one with a single IMU is four hundred dollars, I think. Um, I opted for a dual IMU setup, so that's an extra one twenty five. So you're looking at five hundred and twenty five dollars, um, and putting that on top of your eleven hundred dollar gimbal, it's getting pretty high up there. Um, but if you already got the gimbal, and uh, you're like me, frustrated to death with it, then this is. Uh, better than throwing it in the trash I reckon <laughs> um, although you might want to and that's how I felt for a very long time uh, so anyways so basically the basic setup you get is your board it's called the uh, Phobotic CP because um, there's two versions uh, there's the CP and then they make a different board which is called the HV and the HV is more made for uh, those cameras that are just massive, you know, like Reds or the uh, whatever that Airy or whatever. So um, this will work just fine for uh, I, I I presume up to 5D. Uh, it can be powered up to 5S uh, battery with this board. So that's plenty of power. You shouldn't need any more than in, than 5S. I wouldn't believe. Um, but you know the GH4 is very light, and I'm running the lightest lens you could possibly run in, on this thing, which is the 14 millimeter, and most of it is plastic. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty light setup is what I got. But let's take a look at it. So we have here's the uh, gimbal board itself, and how I mounted that was just a cut off piece of uh, of a race quad that I had, and so I just bolted it in, drilled some holes into the aluminum. Um, and bolted in this plate so that I could mount the CP uh, on there, raised out, uh, because there's a lot of exposed electronics in there. Um, I took the old gimbal controller out of here, uh, just because that thing was well, it died on me, and it was a piece of junk. Uh, <laughs> so, um, But basically, all you have to do with this is just run wires. Um, you're just going to have to take off uh, these three bolts here on that hold on this arm here. See if we can show you that. Uh, there's just three bolts. There's one up here, and there's two. Eh, I can't get under there. Okay, so there's two on the bottom, right there. So those two will come off, and that will allow this whole arm assembly to move forward um, and come off. Um, you'll have access to the hole in the rod in the yaw motor here. Um, just be careful. You're gonna have all these wires in there. Um, you know, you want to do this without the camera on, of course, and, and on a flat surface so that you're not stressing out any wires that you may want to keep. Um, but yeah, once you get in there, you have access to the, uh, the hole going through the yaw motor. Um, you might want to take off, well, probably you're going to want to take off uh, this here, which is pretty easy. It's a uh, couple bolts here. Pull out. You're going to be pulling out the board anyways. You're going to be taking out the bolts that are back in here, pulling this plate off. Uh, pulling the gimbal controller off, you'll see two other bolts. This whole thing comes off. Um, this black part, and there's just two other bolts in there. And then there's three bolts that hold the yaw motor on on this uh, piece here. And once that comes off, then everything will kind of you can pull all this apart and expose all the wires and get everything so that you can run things through, take wires out. Uh, it takes a little while. Um, it's not the not the most fun thing to do in the world. I. I can attest to that, but uh, it's it's not bad at all. It really is not bad at all. It just takes a little bit of time. So once you get all that off, you can then mount your, I mounted mine down here. You can mount it there. You can mount it up here. I mean, it's up to you. You want to try and get it into the center of the, uh, you know, as close to the center of the axes as you can. Uh, that's about as close as I could get it. Uh, it's working out pretty good um, really good actually uh, so that's basically that and then you just run your wires up uh, through and run them through the center here you're gonna have to <laughs> well do what I did and take the pins out of the connector um, 
because that hole in the middle is too small to feed through. So you just mark your pins uh, on your IMU wire and uh, so that you can feed them through uh, because that's this little connector here is a little too big to go through that hole. Same with the uh, uh, servo wires that are in the motors themselves. And you know, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, uh, it's pretty easy. You just run them through and then hook them back up. Just, just keep an idea of what wires are which, um, especially for this guy. Uh, for the motor, it's not as important because the uh, software will automatically reverse the motor or turn it forward since they're just brushless motors. It doesn't matter uh, which three ways the wires go, you know, uh, it's just going to change polarity, reverse or forward, and they'll do that automatically in the software for you, which is nice. Um, so yeah, so then you just run your wires up. Uh, be careful in here because there's just a mess of wires and when you're putting things back together because I've pull this part off as well um, to to uh, run the wires out the back here um, there's the wire for the video out which the board is here it's powered by the HDMI uh, cable going from the camera so the camera powers the board uh, this HDMI com converter which is also I believe aligns IMU combined unit um, maybe that's why it sucks so bad but uh, <laughs> so this is just the AV wire there and so uh, that runs in and actually connects in here now when I pulled all this off I let it hang and I broke a wire so I wasn't getting any video out and I was kind of freaking out because I didn't want to get a new uh, HDMI converter and spend even more money on this stupid gimbal. So, um, but I got it figured out, soldered it up. It was just a broken wire in there because there's a connector, and uh, now it works like a charm. So yeah, that's basically the setup. It's just running in here. Your connector for your yaw motor is uh, right up in here. So you will have to take this off and get down. It makes it easier. I mean, you can get to it if you really wanted to, but just take these off. It takes five minutes. Um, and plug in there and so I used a real short little servo cable and just went from that one out into the uh, roll motor um, there so uh, pretty simple pretty straightforward I just went from uh, my yaw which another with another servo cable and that just hangs out there and uh, as you can see it's very free to move I have it in the software so that uh, I think this is as far as the gimbal will actually go when I'm panning it has a the spot where you can limit how far you want the gimbal to go, which is nice, uh, so that you don't get it to go around and and start messing up wires and pulling things apart and what have you. Um, so yeah, so that's what I have on my setup here. Uh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. It's just a matter of mounting, getting wires run. It'll probably take you about took me about eight hours, but that's because I had to take everything off and put it back on and then and adjust things. But uh, you know. It's, if you've done any any work on your 690, you'll be able to do this easily. Um, so yeah, I have the dual IMU setup. So um, I have my one IMU coming from the camera, which is under there. And then I mounted my other one. Get this up. Right up here. So I um, tried to mount it in the center of all the... Uh, axes as much as possible um, and I think it's working I mean I'm getting good results so <laughs> um, so yeah and then up here of course my battery mod where I move the batteries up front um, and I'll go around to the front to show you that like, so uh, yeah so you can see that they just hang out here and and it leans a bit more to the Ford maybe but um, that's also due to the fact that I moved my landing gear back as well. Um, here you can see how I set up the camera here. Um, and what I'm talking about by moving the whole camera back to the center axis that I was talking about in my last video. You can kind of see now um, it's pretty dang close. I did have to move this on this uh, adjusting point here to get my yaw balance better on the gimbal when balancing it for the uh, 
gimbal controller. So, yeah, so you can see it's almost right there and then on the yaw as well because that's where your copter is going to be pitching and everything. So, um, it's working really well. Uh, I'm not getting nearly as much uh, prop wash because I'm really far back. I mean, you once I start moving forward, you can hear it in the footage. You can hear the prop wash come. You can hear it getting disturbed air in the camera. Uh, and then once you move past that, it's it's nice, clean, smooth air, pictures nice and clear. So, um, yeah, it's working very, very well. Uh, I'm liking it. So that's how I got it mounted there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and boot this up for you guys to uh, kind of show you how it's all uh, how it's all working here and my whole setup and everything. All right, so here's my battery wires here. So I just plug these guys in. And now you can kind of see, uh, you know, it's nice and free to move in between those wires. Uh, so that's, it's working out very well for now. Um, you know, if you want to go through the, uh, through the slip ring, to avoid all this cluster, um, I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard to do that. Um, I just didn't want to deal with it, uh, with the slip ring, or, and I just didn't trust it that much. Um, so, because um, the wires are just, they're a little skinny. Um, so, I just wanted a little more power. So, I have everything set up up here, and I have it all Velcroed, um, because when I'm going to go do a shoot, because I have this going to go on to the handheld rig, um, I need to be able to get it off the, the copter and onto the handheld rig in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, yeah, I could probably do it in about 10 minutes, probably. Uh, so uh, I need to be able to get the second IMU cable gone, I need to get the RC cable gone, and then uh, change the uh, power line. Because I have the power coming from the PCU just off of a servo cable. Uh, so it's just coming out of that with its standard 12 volt, just like the uh, old uh, gimbal. It's coming out of that same spot. Just now, I just put in a long servo cable and into uh, the power lines that I have running out of the CP. Um, so yeah, so it's pretty, pretty easy, pretty simple. Um, but yeah, so I have everything there so that I can take it all off, get it down, get it put onto the handheld unit uh, within a reasonable amount of time and not too much frustration in, in cursing. So uh, let's get her powered up here. Um, so it takes a little bit longer to power up than um, like the uh, the Align gimbal, uh, but then again it works twice as good, so <laughs> it's not a huge sacrifice. Um, it has to boot up the IMU, so now it's booting up IMUs, heating them up, uh, getting everything ready. Um, as you can see, it's kind of moving around. Uh, it's going to take its calibration. So you can do two startups uh, if you want when you're out the field. You can uh, do a long startup to take extra calibrations. And uh, I don't know, I haven't tried that. So I can't say if it works better or not. I mean, it's working good as is. Um, so there we go. We're ready to go. Um, you have all of your lights here and, and the blue one all the way over here says you're ready to go. So um, you can see the IMU up top and everything. So so yeah, it's pretty dang cool. Um, oh, another thing uh, with some of my mods is this top plate here uh, that the gimbal's hanging out on. It's, a fi it's for the 5D. Uh, GH for Align's 5D version of the gimbal, whatever that designation is, the GH 5D or whatever. So I think that gives me a wider stance um, and allows it to be a little more stable. I'm also running all yellows because this uh, gimbal controller really likes a really hard surface to work against. Um, I'm not getting any uh, jello or anything, so I might be lucky. I don't know. Anyway, so that's basic setup on the on the copter. Now, one of the cool things about this is, uh, for me, 
for example, I'm going to be doing a bit of real estate, well, a lot of real estate work with this um, in coming up months. And you can save presets on the board itself for, I have one preset set up right now for Arial and then one preset set up for uh, my handheld unit. Um, and you can switch between the two with the press of this, with the press of this button here. Uh, there's two buttons here. I forget what this one does, uh, but this one uh, you can change through the banks, and you can have I think four or five presets in the gimbal itself. So you don't need to take the laptop to the field or anything. Um, you can uh, change through your pre presets on the fly, and uh, uh, you can even do an auto tune on the field, which is kind of cool um, with just a combination press of these buttons. The other thing that's really neat. Um, is the ability to turn on and off the gimbal uh, with the press of this button. So if you need to monkey with any of this wiring up here, you can turn it on and off so that you don't uh, mess anything, you know, so it doesn't go crazy, um, you know, because it, it you, well, here. See, it doesn't like it when you do that. So, um, and you just let it go and it's ready to go again. So instead, you just turn off the gimbal. So now you can move it around, change settings, exposures, whatever you need to do. Um, and it works really well. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get her set up onto the computer uh, and show you guys some of the software, huh? So yeah, so we got it hooked, I got it all hooked up to the computer. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it on um, just to show you, you know, so when you're on the field, you just hit that button again. And when it's already been booted up, uh, it starts up way faster. So there it is, it's ready to go. Um, so uh, the software is in Google Apps, which is interesting. Um, but it, I mean, it looks good, it works good, and there's I have no complaints. So uh, we'll just go to it, COM8. And there we are. So you, it's kind of cool. You get to see your battery status, what what the power is going in, um, and when you're doing the auto tune, you can actually see that it's it's drawing quite a bit of power, uh, and and the motors get warm. So it this gimbal controller makes that gimbal uh, work for its money, work for its living, which is is what we want. Um, so here we go. You have uh, you can start stop the gimbal, of course, and then the auto tune. The auto tune is cool because you can auto tune. Uh, an individual axis. So um, if you just wanted to, let's say, auto tune the pitch, you can just unselect all these and just tune the pitch. And now let's say if you want to just tune the gain and not the power, which is something I had to do, you just turn off the power and it's going to just auto tune the gain to get you into a good ballpark. And, and you know, I've done just the auto uh, tune myself and I'm getting good results and just a little bit of user gain down here. I turned it down a little bit on my roll. My roll is a little bit funky. Um, I think it's because my gimbal is slightly out of balance. Um, and I'm guessing because I've tried to balance it the best I can. I'm guessing because my lens is a little light. Um, with, with you know, a, a heavier lens, it might be better. It might be easier to balance. I'm not sure. Um, but so my big problem was my roll motor was going crazy. Uh, so I'd do the auto tune and it would just and go all over the place, uh, and it would fail. So I read into the uh, the user manual and it told me that uh, it said in there use a higher power rating for a high pull motor. So I just assumed oh well, I better give that a try. Uh, maybe a Lions motors are high pull. Um, they're not, but it worked. So I boosted my power by 10%, or not 10%, 10 points uh, from 36 to 46, and it fixed everything. So I don't know what that's about. Um, I know I think there's another guy on uh, on the uh, on the forums. I think Chris he had a problem with his yaw motor, um, so and he had to do the same thing. So it must be something weird with. Um, with the uh, the motors, who knows? Anyways, so here's your standard uh, tuning right here. It's like kind of the the easy general tuning. Um, 
and then you have each uh, of your axes right here. So uh, this is where it gets way beyond me. Um, you have your uh, PIDs here, follow settings, and then you get to advanced stabilization settings, which there are many. Um, so you can really get in depth if you're uh, really good at this stuff. Um, something that, you know, I'm not. <laughs> So, uh, I don't know what any of this stuff means. Uh, so, so, get on all your things. So, I was having problems with my yaw, and my problems were because of uh, user error. Um, so, here's your follow settings here, and that's uh, what I was having problem with, is my follow on my yaw was real um, jerky. And so, I changed it to Arial Soft, to begin with and still that wasn't enough so I went into edit and look at how many options you have just to uh, change um, the follow setting so I don't know what I'm doing in here but I finally figured out a uh, a good uh, setting because there's you know delay in milliseconds dead band max speed max acceleration travel limit uh, time limit max speed degrees a second I mean you can really go into depth and fine-tune things just the way you want so I think I have it there uh, pretty good now so um, so yeah so that's pretty cool uh, I really like that um, then the other really cool thing is this the gimbal analyzer so it really kind of gives you an idea of what you can um, what's going on with your gimbal um, if you have too light of dampeners or or if your motors are binding or whatever, you know, there's all sorts of different things in the in the instructions to kind of figure that out. So we'll just select pitch here and then we can generate um, what the gimbal's gonna do. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you the gimbal. I'm gonna hit generate and the gimbal's just gonna make a little probably didn't even get to see that. Um, super little it just kind of tick, tick, goes up back and forth and then it generates this uh, wave here so you can see exactly what it's doing um, my pitch is pretty good it's a little wobbly right here um, but that might just be due to my uh, dampeners because uh, it's getting a little bit of bounce and probably also because my copter is leaning so much um, so it's getting a little bounce from that but that's really cool because you can see what the gimbal is doing what it sees um, and you can do that on all uh, axes. So you can export that and save it um, and then that's really cool is then send a support request and so it's going to take all of that information that uh, analyzer and everything and it's going to send it to the guys at Phobotic and then they'll look through it and tell you what's going on and uh, from going through the forms they get back to people really fast and we'll tell them exactly what's going on and can get things fixed really fast. So that's really cool um, and very helpful for a lot of people because uh, there's actually support. So these guys are, are, you know, they do what they do best and that's gimbal stuff. So um, uh, let's see, advanced settings. I don't know what any of this stuff is. Uh, set up your RC control, which is kind of cool. Uh, you can really get in depth with it. Um, position limiting, you know, uh, acceleration speed, all that stuff. So it you really have a lot of control um, over it and for me sometimes a little too much control so uh, so yeah so it's pretty dang cool I guess you, if you want to write your own code maybe I have no idea um, so yeah so that's the that's the uh, basic tutorial around the software for you guys so you just kind of get an idea of, of what you can do and what you can't do with it um, so so yeah um, that's pretty much the controller and the, and the, uh, whole gist of it. Um, I'm getting it, f uh, fine tuned in and I'm getting some good results out of it. Um, so hopefully I can, uh, have some example. I'm, I'm uploading a, an example video I took just the other day for you guys. Um, and, uh, it's, it's looking pretty darn good. So hope that helps somebody out there um, who's thinking about blowing the ton of money it is to get this little guy on there but uh, 
we'll see. Only time will tell if it's worth it, worth it or not. So, I mean, it's been doing great for me as is, and it has already paid for itself. So, um, so it was a good buy. So, um, for me, uh, maybe I got lucky because it's working. Who knows? <laughs> so, uh, but I'll keep you guys updated on on how it's working, and so that you guys could feel confident that it's that it's going to be something that's going to work because it is a lot of money, you know, and, uh, for a, for a crummy gimbal to put on a crummy gimbal, but the gimbal works so good and it's so well built, you know, I don't know what's wrong with the line. They're just like, Oh, we'll put in the most crappy controller ever. Um, but, uh, yeah, with this one, it works great. So, so yeah, I hope that helps somebody. And, uh, 